Listen, today we're going to talk about drive shift because I really, I really do feel a lot of you don't understand that that is your money. That's where all your money is going to come from. So today we're going to discuss a perfect drive shift. Don't match the name, just the name, okay? We're going to discuss a decent drive shift and you look at your log and see if you've been doing what you're supposed to be doing on your drive shift. That's happening today on the Trucker Brown channel. All right. Most people look at their drive shift as like, it, you're, you're, it's, it's, two, it's two different type of drivers. It's, it's a driver that is, that is pretty much, I'm going to get there on time and they do their drive shift based on that. And then there's, there's the driver that, that tries to save every single ounce of time. You know what I'm saying? Like every single ounce of time. Now, the one who saves every single ounce of time, obviously, they make more money. But if what we're trying to get work with you, we're trying to get you out of the stopping. When you stop, it costs you money in more ways than one. We're trying to get you out of the stopping. So I'm just going to just just follow me here. If. OK, if you are driving, right, you're driving and let's say you start, it is um, eight in the morning. You're eight hours before you have to take a 30 minute break. There's drivers who don't stop at all in between that. I'm not a big. Um, I'm not a big advocate for that. This is what I think. You. This is what I do. I start driving. I drive for four hours. Then I stop for no longer than eight minutes. It used to be 16, but I've gotten it down to eight minutes. So you have eight hours until you have till you have your um till you have your break. I start driving four hours. I'll stop usually to take a leak. I've timed it. If I stop at a truck stop, it rounds out about between 12 and 16 minutes. If I stop on the side of the road, I can do it in four minutes. Rest area, about six to eight. So we'll call it eight. Stop, use the bathroom for eight, get back on it. Then I'll drive for another three hours and 53 minutes. At the end of that, you're at your eight hour break. Okay. You've only stopped once for no longer than eight minutes. You're going to do your eight hour break and you're going to do the eight hour break for 30 minutes. Now, what I'm about to tell you is how. How runners do it. OK. But technically you can't do this. So I'm about to give you a drive shift thing that is not what you're supposed to do okay you're not supposed to do this and if and if you get pulled over by dot they can technically they, not take they can get you a ticket for it so let's say this person all right i'm not gonna say i do this at all <laughs> let's say this person this person stops for his 30 minute break he's gonna pull up to the um uh, uh to the to the aisle to the fuel aisle He's going to go on off duty first, first uh, ticket of offense because you're supposed to be on on duty fueling at the place. But I'm going to tell you how to get the money anyway. He puts himself on off duty. He, 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 he fuels up. Fueling takes about 10 minutes. We'll call it 10, 15 minutes to fuel if he has to fuel all the way up. OK, once he's done with that, he just he just moved his fueling time into his 30 minute break because that was a separate stop if you're not running your clock correctly well i'll explain it more then he pulls up to the front of the fuel island or 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 he just or he puts himself on a real quick pc and he pulls up to a parking spot whatever he does 
The rest of his 30 minute break, he'll go inside. He'll get his bike to eat and use the bathroom. Right. By the time he gets out, he's at about 24, 27 minutes. He'll wait for his 30 minute break. When his 30 minute break is up, he's back on the road. You understand? He's back running. Now, he just fit two stops into the 30 minute break. Because if you're someone who thinks literal, which a lot of you do, especially when I'm talking to rookies right now, a lot of you rookies look at this as 30 minute break. You just pull over and you just wait for 30 minutes, which technically is what you're supposed to do. <laughs> OK, you're supposed to do this because um, but but a lot of runners, this is what they're doing. I don't do this. <laughs> a lot of runners are doing this. Um, then he'll. Once he does all of that within his 30 minute break, he's fueled up. He's looked ahead, make sure his route is good. He's got food and or snacks to last for the rest of the time. And then he, he goes off. It's over. He runs it into where he has to drop or he runs it. Usually at the end of that eight, you're going to have three hours and some change left. Maybe yeah, three hours and some change left. He does his three hours, and some change left. He's down the road. He has stopped the truck twice in his 11 hour drive shift, 14 hour situation. This is a drive day now, we're just nothing but driving. He stopped the truck twice. One for eight minutes, one for 30 minutes, cause it's mandated, you have to do that. So 38 minutes is what he technically lost in being on per time or productivity, however you wanna look at it. To me, this is to me, and I can be wrong. That is what I would call a perfect drive day. Now there's guys out there that are way more Nazi that they're they're they doing all type of stuff. Now the reason why, okay, we have to get it. Let me make sure I'm in focus when I do this. We have to get an understanding. This, according to the book, you can't do anymore. This can't be done. Back in the day, this could have been done. But now, if you do this and you run into the wrong DOT officer that's going to check, let me tell you what he's going to hit you on. First thing he's going to hit you on is the fact that you're at the fuel island and you weren't on duty. That's one ticket. That, that's, that's the number one ticket. Number two, well, if you're in Washington, according to what the lady told me, there is no such thing as PC personal conveyance time. She didn't care. She said that, and then she gave me, it's on my Instagram, at Trucker Brown, uh, a printout showing where the state law said there was no such thing as PC. So if you're in that state, you got hit with the PC from the fuel island to the parking space. That's two tickets. Deal of business? That, that, that's, that's, that's two tickets. So, and then the fact that you, if you put this into uh use then you've done that every day so now that's two tickets times how many days she got you doing it right if if that person wants to be that douche if they want to be that so understand you could just there's ways around it. Let's say you didn't want to, I don't want to take that risk. And I don't want to, I don't want you to take that risk. I'm just telling you what I know and, and trying to tell you what, what can be, what can be done about it and what is okay to do and what it's not okay to do. You could be one of the guys, uh, some of the guys who taught me when I was a rookie, they, they always stopped where they were going to fuel. So in their belief, you shouldn't be fueling during the day anyway, which is hard to avoid if you're strategically fueling as owner up or lease. So that's a whole nother bag, but we're not going to confuse you with that. But they basically fall asleep where they're going to fuel. They'll wake up the next day. They will, they will um, get to the fuel island and they'll fuel and then they'll leave. 
and hopefully they get enough fuel for them to do everything they need to do that day. That way, when they do that 30 minute break, the only thing they're doing is eating in between there, which is okay to do. And they got the one stop for 10 minutes to use the bathroom in that eight hour situation, eight hours before you have to do your 30 minute break. So one, two, three, four, eight minute break, one, two, three and 59 minutes and 53 minutes, do your 30 minute break. It's up to you on how you want to do it. But let, that's one way you can look at running your logs. But let, let's, let's, let's break down the rookie things you're doing, why this is not done correctly at all. You are, if I've seen logs where someone has stopped six times between starting and their eight hour break. Your stamina is not up. Okay, your stamina is terrible. You don't you don't have good stamina. You're just starting off, which is understandable. I'm not picking on you. I'm we're we're, we're working it out to make you better. So you're driving for an hour, thirty minutes, getting bored, stopping, go inside. Uh, 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 my ex, uh, uh, my boy Troy, call it cock gazing. You going inside, just looking at CBs and walking around and refreshing your Mountain Dew. You'll stop, boom, you stop for 10, 15 minutes there, get back on the road, run for two hours, stop. Go inside for 12 minutes, cock a little bit, run around, do what you got to do, use the bathroom, woody, woody, woo. You go again, drive for an hour 40, stop. You're doing that because your, your stamina is terrible because you're new. And you're thinking in your mind that at least I'm not late. That's how you're looking at it. At least I'm not late. Some I've even heard people tell me they do this so they never have to run the nights on a long road, a long route. So instead, because if you run as efficiently as I just said, some guys run and they'll have their little tweaks. And if you and if someone wants to respond to this video and say, hey, TV, this is the way I do it. Go ahead. I don't mind. I don't I don't mind you doing that. that that's that's great because it, it's more than one way to skin a cat. But. If you're one of those people who are who are. If you run the way I'm telling you to run and they give you a North Carolina to Sonoma, Sonoma, uh, California flatbed load, which they are out there or to Rancho Cucamonga or something like that. And you're going to run them twenty nine hundred miles straight across. This is going to run you into the night. Because the next rule is that you're not supposed to be in the sleeper no longer than 10 minutes. So if you started at seven and did this perfect eleven. Right. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, one, two, three, four, five. Six extra 30 minutes, we'll call that, we'll go ahead, go, go to 12, seven. You're going to stop six, seven-ish at night. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, one, two, three, four. Four o'clock in the morning, you're supposed to start running the next day. And if you're running as tight as we're trying to get you to, you start running at four. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, one, we'll call it 2.30. 2.30, you're shutting down the next day. You only did, you did about, if you're running heavy, you did about 1,200 miles in those two days. All right. Now, now you stopped at, uh, 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 what did I say, 2? Did I say 2? 6, yeah, yeah. So you start around 2 o'clock. We'll call it 2.30. You stop 2.30 in the afternoon. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 o'clock that night, you're supposed to run. You see what's happening? You're, you're running yourself into the night if you're running this efficiently. You're not running efficiently if you get to wake up between 6 and 8 o'clock every morning. You're not. You're not running tight. You're not running that efficient. You're not doing none of that. You're not, dude. You're not. You're, 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 there's a lot of time being wasted if you can wake up every day at 7 in the morning. If you're running in cross country like this, there's no way you're doing that. It is, it's, it's just no way. You can't do it. So what I'm proposing and, and telling you a, a way, this is just not, I'm not telling you how to do anything. This is a way to look at your clock. That's all this is, just a way to look at your clock to be more efficient and make more money. Okay, that's all I'm telling you, is that as someone who's been driving for a long time, this is some of the ways I look at my clock. I look at my clock this way. I'm not just like, long as I'm going to be on time and I can just waste time in, in the middle. I don't, that's not how I do it. I do it all the way, boom, I can get it there. I can, and, and if you, if you're, and these loads are dang there. Uh, sometimes prime, uh, uh, pe people's loads are booked at like 55 miles an hour. You're going 60 to 70, some of y'all going 80 miles an hour. 
So there's no real reason to be late, late unless the shipper just screws you over. But if you're looking at your drive clock like this, the bare minimum you should be doing four hours at a time when you're driving before you stop for an eight minute break. You should not be stopping in an hour and 30 minutes, 45 minutes, two hours. And this is talking to the rookies only. Let me tell you something. The guy's been driving for two years and up. They know this already. This is for a person that's on a trainer's truck right now. This is for the person who's going to the school. This is for the person who just got their truck and their trainer's not on there no more so they can fall into bad habits. This is for you. No one else. Because the guys that's been making a living doing this, their money taught them this already. They don't do this <laughs> because they want their check. You see what I'm saying? Their money taught them this already. This is not something, I'm not telling them nothing they never heard. Now, some people's going to be like, nah, I don't do it this way. And a lot of dudes have very elaborate drive shift things that are way better than mine. I'm telling you, it's some mavericks out here, which I said, if you want to respond to it, go ahead. Respond to this video and say, um, ATB, I see what you're doing, but this is how I do it and break it down. But y'all don't even have a lot of the rookies that are coming in. And the reason why I'm saying you don't have it, because I know because I was you. You don't even have an outline. Because when you go to the, to, to the company, they just gonna take you out of the crash. <laughs> That's it. And they're gonna teach you the eight two split because that helps them mess with your sleep and then to get lows that really shouldn't be getting there in the first place. That's all that is, okay? So understand what I'm saying. Look at your clock different. That's what I'm trying to teach you. This is the Trucker Brown channel. I'm Trucker Brown. Sub to the channel, hit the bell for notifications. Go to Instagram, at Trucker Brown. The point of you subbing to this channel is to do better. That is it. It's not to fanboy, it's not for us to get cool, it's not, it's for you to do better. Do not do drugs. I'm out of five body. <laughs>